Hi, and welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Uh, what is this, January 28th? Is that right? Yep. Could be. Tw 28th. So we, we, we got the uh, usual crew here tonight. We've got uh, myself, uh, Lucas, Anna, and Christian. What's up? Hello. So, uh, after we did uh, Christian's show last week, uh, we went ahead and said, oh, he, you know, you want to do Bot Bots again. So, uh, <clears throat> Anna said that she really wanted to do Legends. So, I said, and she said she really wanted to do Legends Hot Rod. So, so Legends Hot Rod, right, Anna? Yes. Is that right? Aha, Legends. Is I get it. LG. Ta Takara Legends Hot Rod, right? <clears throat> Yeah, people like that figure, right? Don't yeah. know why. It's cool. Why wouldn't you like it? It's, Whoa, it's isn't, so good. Isn't it the Headmaster mold? Uh, it yeah. is the Headmaster mold. And it has a little clear, translucent chest. I have a version of that, but it's Ken Masters. Yeah. No one even knows who that is. Uh, a lot of people know Street Fighter, Christian. A lot of old people. Just not people who were bored after... A time. I didn't have a comeback. Good. I That's tried. A good, one. A good comeback. <laughs> so, Born so after that, in time. So is that what we're doing tonight, Anna? Is that right? I know we it's kind of weird to do a, a, a figure so old, but... Yeah, well, if we did old figures, I'd have more to talk about, honestly. So, okay. So Legends, Legends Class Hot Rod. Is that right? Is this the one we're doing? <laughs> Oh, what's that hideous thing? Legend class hot rod. Bro. This Don't throw me. <laughs> this is from um is it Combiner Wars? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Combiner Wars Legends class hot rod, right? Yep. Is that is that the one we're doing? Yeah, it's it's not also. Now the the convenient thing is that the actual figure we're doing has been on the camera the entire time. So no. Okay. Sorry. Here. Sorry. Well, you said you wanted to do third party legends hot rod. Okay. All right. I got it now. Third party legends hot rod. Right. I got it. Is, is this the one? Yes. Is this it's it? definitely that one. Oh, the real one yeah. died. Oh, jeez. So yeah. there it goes. No Show's over. I guess it's a no. The, the figure can't even stand up. So, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a fail right there. Review over. It's done. So, yeah. It, so, there you so, go. Yeah, All right. So, so Anna, what, what for actual people thing? who are not on camera, people who are listening instead of watching, Lucas has held up a series of things that could be construed as being a Legends hot rod. Not mostly Rodimus, though. Mostly Hot Rod is what he's come up with. Because he has that Legends... I believe the Japanese name is Legends Rodimus, right? So that's closer? Or it's Hot Rodimus? Well, technically... It's Hot Rodimus, I think. In, and in then the, the Combiner Wars one is Rodimus. Yeah, something like that. Technically, so. on, the, um, on my other camera that you can't see right now, it is a G1 reissue um, Rodimus. Rodimizer. So. Gotcha. So yeah, so this isn't, isn't the actual figure. I just need something for the fourth camera. So Rob, if you want to be on fourth camera, you can you can come on and take the spot of the of my G one guy. You just have to pose one one face. You and Rob. Ha 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 ha! That was made an awkward comment. Moving forward, so Lucas <laughs> held up a series of figures that he is joking could be what we're covering. I've and got a fair amount of hot rods. What we're actually covering is this guy, which is MFT's Flame Commander, which Who's is MFT? also Hot Who's Rod. Who's MFT? MechFan Toys. MechFan Toys. Okay. Also okay. known by about 600 different names. I believe the actual name on the box is Mech Studios for this one, if I remember right. I haven't looked at the box in months. Hmm. <laughs> But Megfit Toys is the company that alternates between really nice um, original molds for Legends Plus, as we call it. So it's like the Legends scale, but it's a little bit bigger. Um, and then they also alternate knocking off 
other figures from other Legends class makers. Um, in the past, they were doing they were doing Iron Factory. In the past, they've done they just did DX Nine, right? Why not? I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, whatever, whatever they can get off. a hold of, whatever, <laughs> whatever they can rip magic off, square. they'll they'll do it. So. But this is not one of those. This is one of their original molds. Although I think there has been some debate about where this mold originally came from. Or is that the Papa no, Toys? No, the Papa made? Toys one. So, okay. I, ironically enough, right, um, Mech Fans Toys has made their living off of ripping off other companies' designs, right? But then, originally, they were going to do the Papa Toys Hot Rod, which is this one, but someone stole that design and sold it to Papa Toys before Mech Fans Toys could release it. So, ironically enough, this was originally supposed to be Mech Fans Toys. So, they ended up, um, I guess, coming up with a completely different design or paying for a different design, which is the figure that you're showing right now. Yep. And Mech Fan Toys has... So they've alternated between kind of like somewhat improved versions of various molds. So they've released like the old, um, those are old unique toys, um, headmaster molds from quite a while ago. But they've like, for like the hard head, they've reworked a ton of it. The chrome dome I thought was pretty good. People really like their weird puff, but they're upscaled and there's a lot of improvements on them. So it's like, you know. It's in that gray area of are they doing a good deed or an evil deed? Who knows? But this um, figure is entirely. I, I would say deed. in no. general, most of the Mech Fans toys are upscale, but they don't necessarily have improvements on them. Like I think the um, the Headmasters, I think did, but I think most of the other ones were pretty much just straight knockoffs. It alternates, but then when they come up with new figures, they've been pretty impressive. Like Huge Dragon. Like, that yeah. is a really nice Omega Supreme that you can yeah. get relatively cheaply that's small. Have you is never it, seen Heat Dragon, Christian? Why is it called that? He's not a dragon. Why is it, I, I don't, it, uh, it's a great name, that's why. I was yeah, like, is that why not? Just three huge, to Megatrons or something? No, it's Omega Supreme. Okay. No, uh, I, yes. I would say Mech Fan Toys, that huge dragon figure, is by far their best figure. Like, it's Wait, not it's, called, it's not close. It's not a dragon, and it's not huge. <laughs> Who else did they release, Anna? I think there was... Um, Springer. Springer? Yeah. Yep. Um, so they also released a Springer. They released, um, I think, a Hound as well. And I don't I haven't handled that one, oh, so I don't yeah. know Oh, yeah, they was. have done a Hound. They just didn't like it, because MP Hound was coming out, and... I got that, and I got to complain about that on camera, so it's all good. There you go. I, I, that's my job here. I complain about figures on camera. That's you what I do for you guys. Yeah. And, okay, so, complaining aside, not actually <laughs> complaining tonight. I actually do, spoiler alert, like this figure, but I have both, you know, positives and negatives to talk to about it. Talk about to it? Talk. Anyway, to cover. There we go. Um, so if you saw the post, the post I gave this week was, um, the Rod in its Prime vehicle mode. Because this figure, what they tried to do is they tried to have a figure that could serve the purpose of being a Hot Rod or a Rodimus, but really it's a Rodimus. I mean, the way it's built, the size of it, it really is a Rodimus figure, not a Hot Rod figure. But it does have the... Um, little trailer medoodle here that you can see um, that you can plug you transform him into a car plug this into him and he is you know vaguely Rodimus like and if you see from the picture I put up it's actually a pretty good um, Rodimus Prime alt mode there really isn't a whole lot of problems with it it fits together a little oddly because you're actually putting this little hood part over his actual normal hood so it looks a little strange but the overall effect is a good-looking little vehicle. Um, Didn't the and, Masterpiece you know, the do that, too, or am I misremembering? I think so. The Masterpiece was reversed. Okay. Because hmm. the Masterpiece, our release, didn't have the trailer and the... No, it's not Titanium. <laughs> not, it's not... There, nothing's as good as Titanium. Can't replace that. <laughs> 
That's sarcasm. I hated titanium, um, as most people probably did. Anyway, so in its alt mode, in the rod in its alt mode, I think it's a really cool figure. Um, I do not want to quite transform this figure on camera. It's just like on the edge of being a little too complicated to do quickly enough during a show without making the show really long. Um, it's not too complex. It's not bad. It just, you know, it takes a few minutes. Um, but the non Rodimus Prime Alt mode, when you just take the, the hot rod out, the little car, and make it into a hot rod vehicle mode, I honestly, I've seen a lot of people post about how good that is. If you look at pictures of it, I personally think it's awful. I'll put up some pictures um, after the show tonight, but I am not a fan of it because it um, it just it doesn't really have a back because the back in the combined mode gets covered by the back of this. You can actually see that the um, his back fin actually plugs in back there. You move that which, down just slightly. Sure. There you go. His back fin actually plugs in into the trailer thingy. And that allows him to fit together. That means that in his alt mode without the trailer, his back is just kind of messy. And I'm not a huge fan of it. But it works okay. Like, it's it's a fun toy. It's a fun concept. And like I said, it's not complicated enough that it's annoying to play with. It's actually at that fun level of complexity. Um, but I do like those um, those alt modes. The, the combined alt mode I like. The... Hot Rod on his own alt mode, not a big fan of. Um, personally, I like the figure for the set part of it, because when you actually make him into a Rodimus, you know, you have a perfectly functional Rodimus figure, and you have um, the trailer that turns into his little battle base. So let me open this up for you. And look, it's full free to feature. Huh? A long time. That hasn't been a thing, any sort of official figure in a long time. The battle base? Yeah. yeah. You can make the Power of the Primes back into a battle base. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, a fan so mode. A I like that figure. No. Y you can. Here, do you want to see it? No. It's a battle base, yeah, I swear. Our adoring fans want to see you make a battle base. Um... So yeah, this is the battle base that he comes with. It's fairly accurate to, you know, what the original was. And it's fun because you can stand him on it. This part adjusts, which I want to knock things apart. So you can make it tall enough for him. He can sit there and hold it and gun things down. It's honestly a fun little thing to play with. And it makes a cute display. <clears throat> I call Legends figures cute a lot because they kind of are. He stands in it pretty well. Bob Bots are pretty cute. Legends are unintentionally cute because they're small. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's got a good little base mode. It's He poses reasonably well in it, and it pulls off you know, everything the original did, so it's fun to mess with. It makes a good display. And I've put other Legends class figures in there. Thing is, most of my Legends class collection is not Legends Plus, so almost everybody's too small to really look great in this thing. But it's okay. It's still fun. Is there is there a matrix inside of him? Anna? There is, yes. Okay, so... Because we can't have a Rodimus without a I'll matrix. I'll show that in a minute when I show out the features of the figure. Now what I want to say is that the thing Robert, I'm excited for... I, I don't know. Robert's here throwing shade on the G1 toy. What's up with that, Robert? That G1 toy is great. <clears throat> it's fine. I've it's like this, but not good. This... This toy is good and the hot rod or the rodimus is good too that's you why are yours crazy. are open and proudly on display and you're playing with them right now i'd get a rodimus primary issue yeah, I, I might too anyway the thing i was most excited about was the fact that he was going to come with a target master and as you might know if you're legends collectors Target Masters in the Legends class have not really happened, and probably because they'd be way too small to happen normally, which, you know, makes perfect sense. So when I saw that it was announced that here we are, a Legends Plus figure, which, you know, it's a little bit bigger, but it's not that much bigger, was going to have a Target Master, I got super pumped. But then when I got this thing, I realized something very quickly, 
It's actually not that small compared to the target masters that we currently have. So I'm holding up one of the um, one of the siege target masters, and well, the size both, comparison. Both is, yes. So I'm holding up the two versions of Firebolt that are currently in my hands, and they are the um, the MFT one is just a little bit shorter than the siege one. And a That's little bit smaller, close. but overall... What'd you say? That's remarkably close. It's remarkably close. And it actually, he makes a bigger gun because his gun backpack is a little bit bigger. Mm. So, I was disappointed that this is actually um, big. So, it didn't really prove that we can have... Legends class target masters. It proved that Legends class target masters can hold. This, j just uh, sorry. Is it is this not good enough for you, Christian? Is this what you're saying? What? There's a gun. It's a little stand. But Lucas, Lucas, Hot Rod doesn't use the base. Rodimus Prime uses the base. You can't make the base and Rodimus Prime at the same time. <laughs> It, the the Rodimus Prime is essentially the same thing as that that Anne is showing off. Like as the adults were talking. Fine. You know you know what we're gonna do? We'll we'll just stop the stream. That's fine. Who wow. who, who controls the stream? Yeah, I'm glad we're getting along so well. So anyway. Blackjack. This this little fireball type dude, he's okay. He's not as good as the Masterpiece one, of course. He's not worse than the Siege one. He's in the middle. Like, you know, I, I'm a Target Master fan. And this is honestly fine. It doesn't impress me. It doesn't depress me. But what does make me sad is that it's too big. So, that's my thoughts on the Target Master. I was very excited about the fact, like, these guys had to deal with me being pumped about a legend size target master for ages. And then when I got it, it was like, let's not talk about it. <laughs> because it's too big. That's a true story. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Although I will say the one thing, other than the size that bummed me out, is that it is actually made in a shoddier plastic. So it's made in that kind of slick plastic hmm. that you might be familiar with if you bought KO Toys. It's not bad plastic by any means, but it's not as good. Like, this is made in, like, sincerely good plastic. Like, this is MFT's normal plastic. It feels good. It works well. It feels strong. It bends where it needs to. It's great. This just feels like that kind of, eh, plastic. It'll hold up, but it's not great. And it looks fine in gun mode. Yeah. And it on him, it looks a little bit too big. Right. So, so I, I have a question. Yeah. Has anyone else made a um, a legend sized target master that like is proper? Like, I don't think so that transforms and is because like I mean at, at some point it's too small. It, like there, it's it's physically impossible to make a toy that small. You know what I mean? I don't know. I guess some of the world's smallest toys might be the right size. I don't know. Here's the thing, though. Like, MFT reworked the Headmasters on their Legends Plus versions of the Unique Toys ones and gave them a little more posability. And they honestly look fine. Like, they're they're tiny. They work. They work about as well as, you know, the, um, uh, the Titans Returns Headmasters. And I think if you mm. made something that detailed for a Target Master that's pretty simple... I think you could at least get something at the right size. I don't think it has to be a deluxe class target master that you put on my Legends Plus scale figure. I don't think it has to be this. That's a big gun. Now, needlessly, I mean, Transformers are known for having big guns. You can have him mess around and hold it in special ways. It's fine. It's fun. But I wanted, I wanted it to be a normal Firebolt size. And work better, but it's not, so oh well. The last thing about the set is it does come with MFT's signature of a little power armor battlesuit thing. 
And as they've been doing for a while, they make every one of them something different or special. So this one has a hot rod fin. Love so it. it's it's hot rod at the same time as being its own thing. And at least this is the first one I've owned that has a head unit that you can actually pop out to give it an awkwardly placed head. Mm. And they always come with like extra little gun parts and stuff too. So these things are a lot of fun. I own quite a few of them at this point um, from various MFT figures. And I think it just adds to the set. I mean, this is a 50 to $60 set, depending on where you buy it. So you want to definitely get your value where you can because it's not a cheap figure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that, so that's, that about right? that's, that's honestly like my biggest complaint. Like I, you know, you brought uh, the figure over for me to check out. And I think it's a neat figure. Like, I honestly, like, I enjoy most of Mech Fans Toys uh, figures that they've released that I've messed with before, right? Um, but, like, I don't understand. Okay, so, like, Huge Dragon is, like, we talked about that. Like, third-party Omega was, what, like, 50 or 60 bucks. I think it was, like, 60 or yeah. something, right? And, and that gets you so much more. Like, there's so much in that set. Like, it was a big set. It comes with, like, a couple little dudes. It comes with a ton of accessories, all that kind of stuff, right? I would definitely recommend that figure for $60. This, for $60, is there's so many other options. Like, okay, I can get a master... The Masterpiece Hot Rod, the... Um, not the MP09, but the MP... Was it 28? Yeah. That one, yes. Um, the the masterpiece one, like you can pick that up for probably around sixty bucks or something like that, right? On the secondary market, like either one. Yeah, of I don't those think versions. I paid that much for my Target Master version. Like I don't right. think I paid much more than that. I probably paid like seventy five. I think. Yeah, but I mean, so but I I know that it, I think it went down in price. So so you can get a masterpiece <clears throat> version of that for for like around the same price. Um, I just, I like, that's, that's my biggest issue with this figure is, is that I just have, it have a hard time paying the money. I mean, if you really like hot rod, like, and you want a legends class Rodimus, I, I mean, I think that it's like, you go ahead and spend the money on it, but I think it's, I think it's more for the Rodimus mold yeah. part of it. If, if that's what I was understanding from Anna's point of view on this. And really, there's not a lot of choices for an actual Rodimus Prime in that, that price scale. You get Power of the Primes, and that's it. No, there really haven't been... Like, as far as what I... So, my aesthetics, if you watch the show, if you listen to me talk, you know my aesthetics. For my aesthetics, there really have only been a couple Rodimus Prime figures that I think actually capture how he's supposed to look. And I really think it's this one in DX9 Carry. I really... And... The MP, you know, the MP, Rodimus yeah. Prime, it looks like Rodimus Prime, it has issues, but it looks like, um, and I think those are all three good options for something that looks like Rodimus Prime. I think out of the three of them, this is the cheapest, actually, and um, for the price, it's the most complete experience, because it comes with, you know, his target master and his base, and a random friend for him, so honestly, as far as Rodimus options. <clears throat> to me, he's the best one out there in a lot of ways. I mean, if you are saying like I have to have a Rodimus Prime and I want the absolute cheapest version, then yeah, like I would go ahead and do it. And and again, like I would rather mess around with this figure than I would the masterpiece. Like the masterpiece one always just scares me. Like it, I, I wouldn't yeah. want to uh, transform it back and forth. The, the new. The hot rod one is is really cool, but but the old one yeah. I, I didn't like or whatever. So I would say personally, like if you just want a representation of the character and you don't care about Ramus Prime, like I would say the Papa Toys one is the better value just because now again it's not Rodimus, but it's it's hot rod. Um but I think this was like twenty five bucks or something like that. Whereas like that's fifty like so so again I think that, like, this figure looks really great. Um, you didn't show off, too. Did you show off the, uh, it comes with black shins as well that you can pop on. 
Yeah, it does. Um, let me see if they're... Are they right over there? Yeah, they're right over here. Have them. One is on my finger. Or two. Two are on my fingers. Okay. Can we pop one of these? So they just like pop on. Oops, am I doing the wrong side? Yep, I am. They just pop oh, on, and on. I. They don't replace. That's cool. Yeah, they don't replace. They just pop on. He wears them. They're kind of hard to pry off, but they're easy to put on, which is probably what you want because they don't fall off while you're messing with it. And he looks like that with the darker legs. I, think I, I like that better. Oh, I do too. I, they were just off because when I let Lucas mess with it, I think he liked it better without the, um... I do miss yeah, the in a robot mode. It. You what? It's got, like, a sticker or a paint or a tampo right. on it. Right? <laughs> yes, tampo it does. It does. Yeah. And I like it better. I do miss black. that. I think it just flows better as a figure. Yeah. Looks a little more accurate, I suppose, too. Um, just because this is supposed to be a show where I review things, or we review things, sorry. Not just I. I took over. <laughs> The, the rest of us are just sitting here BSing and throwing insults, you know. Yeah, I know. You guys love to do that when I talk about figures I actually care about. Except for all these shows when I talk about the, like, actual um, uh, retail figures that I don't really care about that much. Um, so, like, detail-wise, I think his detail is minimal, but good. Like, as far as paint, there's not much. As far as, you know, apps that are cool, he's got his chest symbol. And really, otherwise, you know, he's just matte colors. And that's basically it. Um, the head is, I'm going to give that head an okay. I don't really yeah. think it's great. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's like the shape it's supposed to be. Yeah. It's the shape it's supposed to be. It's not the most, like, lively or energetic head, but it's fine. I think his proportions feel a little bit off, but at the same time, from a distance, I don't notice that at all. It's just because he has a pretty thin chest overall. I always, I, I think way too much about the aesthetics on these things. Um, articulation wise, really good until you get to two parts. His legs are well articulated. They go all the way out. They go all the way forward. He's got kind of awkward, but workable ankles. Like, these little parts of his feet do like to pop off as you rotate them, but you can rotate them all the way, so that's good enough. Um, his knees, because of everything, are kind of sort of double, but mostly just like this is the way they look good. They can go forward, too. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. Imagine your leg really like that. Trauma day. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. That is his leg articulation. It's pretty good. He's got the, the hip thingy as well. Um, but the arm articulation is where he suffers because that's as far as the shoulder is going to go out. Resting, and if I actually bring him forward, they can't, they stop here. So because of his nice big shoulder pads, he can't actually bend his arm outwards. That's all you really get, which is a bit of a bummer to me. I really do like dynamic posing. But at the same time, it doesn't limit a lot of poses that I like. So it's not too terrible, but it's a bit of a bummer. Um, otherwise, he's got all the articulation you would expect an arm to. And something that's somewhat rare in Legends Land is he does have for swivel. But while his head is on a ball joint, it moves just fine. His waist is on a no joint. And it barely rotates just a little bit. I think most of the legends now <laughs> have uh, the wrist swivel. It really depends on the size. I feel like some of the smaller ones are... like so, a Some of them do, the but most of them now started doing... They, they started doing the thing where they put like five sets of hands in there. Yeah, that's for sure. He doesn't have that. He doesn't yeah. come with a lot of accessories other than... He comes with a little saw blade that the masterpiece comes with, and a gun maybe. Yeah, he comes with a gun over there, and that's that's basically it. So, I mean, most of the accessories are the stuff I've already shown off, though, right? Like I, I like the accessories that come with it. So for me, and I know 
Lucas has already kind of said what he thinks about purchasing it. For me, I think it is a perfectly fine figure to get. I, for some reason, have had a really hard time finding a hot rod I actually like owning. Um, I've actually gone through quite a few of them over the years, and I finally settled on liking the masterpiece for my hot rod. And I think this works for me for Rodimus. It looks like I'm probably going to own Carrie here in a minute, so we'll see which one I like between this one and DX9 Carrie. Um, because as you may know from watching the show and complaining about me over the ages, that um, I try to have one figure per character, so there can only be one Rodimus. It might be this one. I really do like it. I think that, yeah, 50 to $60 is a little steep, but if you're willing to pay, you know, one of the cheaper um, stores that ships directly from China, I think that, you know, you can probably get it in the $50 range, and you have to wait a while, but it's probably worth it to wait for that. I like the accessories. I like the figure. I think it's fun to play with. So I'm in favor. I hate that it has limited articulation, and I really wish this was small. The Target Master. Those are my thoughts. Yeah, um, so I'm sure you guys have probably noticed that um, I don't have the hot rod and that uh, I haven't had as many Legends myself lately. So my biggest issue with the Legends, like, I, you know, I got in and I really enjoyed them, and a lot of them, it's like, they were 20 or $30, and so I was like, you know what? Like, this is pretty much about the sa the same price as a Hasbro figure. So I'm willing to go in because, like, they got more paint. They have more articulation and, and all that type of thing, right? But then Hasbro started releasing figures with similar level of articulation, uh, you know, now with, with Siege. And... Um, the uh, Legends company just started jacking up the price. Now, the quality is better. So, like, if you look now, I mean, not necessarily that figure, but like the I know Anna, you're showing off the the New Age Megatron. Like, so yeah, like the new the New Age Seekers, New Age Megatron. I think those are about. Uh, I think you can get the Seekers for like forty bucks from China, and you can get the Megatron. I think it's fifty or forty five something like that. And they much. have they have a ton of articulation, a ton of paint. They look like the masterpiece version shrunken down. Like a lot of those remind me of, of the, the masterpiece. However, at the same time, I am not going for a display. Like my my dis like if I want a nice display, I'm gonna get masterpiece or you know, whatever, something like that. My legends, like I just want them for like fiddle toys. And so that's the trouble I have now is, is where if every single toy, if I have to get 12 Seekers or whatever it is, 40 bucks a pop, then you're talking $500 for the Seekers. It's yeah. like, ah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of money, especially when I'm, I'm collecting other lines. I think that if, if it's something to where, like, if I was only doing Legends and I just wanted to, you know, I'm just going to, get rid of everything else and, and only do that i think it's a fantastic option because they don't take up a lot of space they look really nice have greater articulation all that and so then i'd be willing to pay the the you know 50 dollars asking price but gosh man like every single figure 50 bucks it's just ah it's i don't know i i, I thought 20 or 30 was a fair price for a lot of these i just i i, I don't know that i can get in on 50 bucks for everyone that's my soapbox for legends and i unfortunately think it is a fair price because these figures are hard to make they do have as you always like to talk about lucas they have high parts count and they are like you know very detailed nice little figures i just think that it, it is hard to justify spending that much on something this small when you could pay much more and get a masterpiece version um, and I do think the, the distance is a little bit shorter than some people would like it to be between the two price points. But I think the problem for me is as the price goes up and as, so it's like this guy, right? This guy is somewhere between how detailed and secure that retail figures like Siege 
and then fancy figures like MP look. Like he's a little heavier on articulation and detail than like a retail figure is these days, but not quite as much as an MP figure, especially when you start transforming them. This guy, on the other hand... When you say this guy, you're talking about the New Age Megatron. Uh, the first one I was talking about... Um, the first one I was talking about the Flame Commander, the MFT, Rodimus. And now I'm shifting over to the New Age Megatron. This guy, the New Age Megatron, from the front, in a limited number of poses, he really, really evokes MP36. Like, he looks very equivalent to that figure. Like, he is as good looking from a lot of angles. And he even has the absolutely fantastic silly face of him laughing that I've liked so much on MP36 for years now. Um, you know, very impressive little figure. Problem is, you rotate something like the MFT Rodimus around, and he's got a little backpack. There's a little gap in the backpack, but whatever. You know, he's not some fancy MP figure that has to be perfect. His back doesn't look perfect, but it still looks okay. But when you have a figure this detailed at the near MP level, and you spin around, and the back and the side view starts to be kind of hollow and mad looking, it really bugs me. Like, I'm really not as... Looking. Right. But I'm not if as you look at on this but, but here's the thing, I though. Am. If you look at the, the DX9 Megatron, uh, the, um, the Masterpiece uh, or Masterpiece scaled DX9 one, it had the same kind of thing. Like it, it I had know. a big, big thing on the back. Even if you look at MP36, now I realize MP36 isn't quite like that, but right. it's still everyone complains to no end about the back on MP36, or they did at I least. Think it's it hard to make that alt mode. I think it's right. really it hard to make that alt mode. Right. And I think that MP36 does it better because it's. I feel like when an MP figure from certain angles starts to look hollow, we feel like we need to criticize it more. It just doesn't feel as good when they don't display from all angles. Case in point. Ta-da! MP Bumblebee. Yeah, Everybody Bumblebee. complains about how he, he displays super well from the front. He's amazing. And then every other angle, he's stir-fried poop it's just not great and it's a bummer and i kind of feel that same way about some of the new age stuff not all of it some of it i think is near near perfect i don't own the seeker mold yet but when i do i think i'll think it's near perfect i saw yeah, someone the new start age seekers it's are, really impressive the new age seekers are really nice yeah, I mean, it does have some hollowness in the center, but it's not nearly as bad as um, Megatron's hollowness in the back. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I still feel like in hand it Great. didn't bother me. Now, at the same time, I to me like these figures are are tiny, and so the fact that it's like a whatever four inch figure or something like that. I mean. Like, these are physical objects, and, like, yeah. there's only so much you can do with transformation and, and all that type of thing. So, I'm willing to give that stuff a pass. And, and the same thing, there's a lot of stuff that those Legends figures, like, I think if you blow it up, is just, it's it's not going to work. Like, they have to do it that way because it's a Legends figure, and it's so, you know, so small and, and with the transformation. I think the reason that I personally, as a Legends collector, because Legends are probably one of my favorite places to collect Transformers right now, I think that as a Legends collector, I feel that I prefer the sweet spot of the premium, but not too, too premium level of detail and transformation and complexity on a Legends figure. And I think MFT hits that really well with their original molds, not their knockoffs. And I think the Magic Square hits that really well with their figures. I think that they're kind of in that middle. Like, they're not too complex. They don't try to look like MP. They have that relative simplicity. To me, they look like a cross between G1 animation models and GoBots. And I enjoy it because I find them to be kind of in the middle of quality. Whereas the New Age stuff tries to hit that, like, we want to look like an MP figure but be teeny tiny. And I just think that's hard at a small size. 
don't get me wrong. I think this thing is super cool. I in no way want to get rid of this thing. I love it. I think it's great. But I, and I even spent the extra money to order the replacement legs because right now his leg joint cannot go forward and back without looking like garbage. So <laughs> this is what happens if his leg goes up. Ta-da! See? It bends not at the hip, but right under the hip, and I can't stand it. <laughs> but the new legs fix that entirely, and you can pick them up for... When you can find them, you can pick them up for about 10 bucks. Taking him from a $50 to $60 figure to a $60 to $70 figure. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I anyway, mean, that's my Legend Soapbox for the night. Yeah, I, I don't know. To me, to me, I think that um, Siege is hitting a lot of the same notes. And again, like, like you know, uh, like Magic Square is releasing a reflector, right? It's ninety dollars, and uh, for the three, fi- it comes with the three figures or whatever. That's ninety dollars. I can get uh, the Hasbro one for sixty dollars, and it looks just as good it looks the same now it depends on what look you're going for if you absolutely have to have a super clean g1 cartoon look then siege isn't going to be for you because it has the greebles and all that kind of stuff on it but i think that it hits a lot of the same notes it's cheaper it's just as nice has the same level of articulation and all that type of thing that the uh that the, uh, the the magic score does and it's thirty dollars cheaper so um again if you're a legends collector you know you probably are just like well screw it whatever you know 90 bucks i don't care but <laughs> i think a lot of people are gonna buy both the um the new age legends reflector and the um magic square legends reflector both are fine they both look good i think the magic square looks better in robot mode and the I just, Siege is okay, but I just can't get over the shoulder joint. Like that, it's just, I'm never going to let it go. We we Um, had a fight about this last week in our group. We did, we did. It was epic. It was epic. Ann and I are just at an impasse on whether or not Reflector has shoulders. The the Siege Reflector, it's just, that shoulder joint is terrible. It, It bends just like this Megatron. It bends at the same place. He has a functional hip. It's just too low. Now, I, I do want to say that uh, I believe both New Age... Uh, is New Age and Magic Square releasing a sound wave or just Magic Square? I honestly have lost track. I, th- I think right now it's just Magic Square. But I, I will say... That that Magic Square sound wave and his cassettes for Mad uh, just look absolutely incredible. Like I think really? that uh, that that figure looks whatever whatever they charge, it looks like it's going to be worth it. And I think that the complaints that we've had about the the new tapes that are coming out from Hasbro, the the those, the MicroMaster size, um, where there's not a lot of articulation and they they look kind of stumpy and whatever. Like the the Magic Square ones are even smaller, and they pull off amazing articulation. Now, I mean, it's just uh, they they've just shown off the prototypes so far, so I mean, we haven't had colored images of it, but those look fantastic. So I'll give it to them on on that kind of stuff. Like to me, I think Reflector is a pass. Um, I, I think the Megatrons, either one of the Magic Square New Age Megatrons, both look really cool. Um, and probably look a little bit better than what you could get from from Hasbro, at least until until the uh, Toy Fair. We'll we'll see what the Earthrise Megatron looks like. But um, yeah, is alt mode is the toilet spoiler? <laughs> yeah, when are we gonna uh, review the uh, Toilet Man, Anna? I don't know. I didn't know that any of us owned it until I found out that Robert owned it. Now, now does now Robert we can review it? Does does Rob have the toilet or the urinal? I think he has both. Oh wow! I think he's literally the best representative of a true Transformers fan in our group because he owns both the toilet and the urinal. Boy. I, I think 
what what uh, I'm a little disappointed, Anna, that you don't have that, but Rob does. I know it doesn't feel right. I just I don't know. It's like there's that little bit of me that's still a bit of a prude, and I'm just like, oh, they're kind of like profane. I don't want to buy them, but at the same time, it's like totally potty humor. It's hilarious. They're both great. I really don't understand why this show is a samurai, but it's fine. So, so yeah. So I, I'd say the new new legends. If you if you want essentially mini masterpieces, I think that's what they are. I mean. A lot of them, like the new ones, the the new New Age Seekers have die casts. They've got a ton of paint. Um, I think that if, like, you are extremely limited on space, I think that that's a good route to go. Um, But I don't know. For for a lot of us that have already been collecting that have a huge masterpiece collection or a huge collection of something else, it can be kind of hard to get into yet another thing. So It can be. I, I think they're really good, though. Like, they're very impressive. And if this was the only thing you were buying, even with the higher price of the newer ones, like these two guys, it's still not going to be a super duper sense of hobby. Just because they are small and a lot of them are cheaper. And if you wanted just a few Legends figures to have as, like, desk fiddle figures or whatever, um, and you have no morals then you could buy a few of the MFT knockoffs because those are always really cheap. Those are always in the $20 to $30 range. Like their headmasters are like $20 to $25. And they come with little friends. They come with little... Where's my armor friend? There he is. For a cheap price. So you could grab a couple fiddle figures. And well, again... That, those are morality. knockoffs. Uh, a lot yep. of them are knockoffs of the Takara... What is it? The... Is it Diaclone? Is that? Oh, the the armor suits, yeah. Yeah, the the armor suits are knockoffs of Takara Diaclone, so. So Yeah, like we said, MFT alternates between really creative, fun, original stuff and knockoffs. Seems to be my sweet spot as I like companies that do that. There you go. So, all right, Anna, so, so, so you got your time, you got your legends. Now we can, you know go back to good stuff. Yep, you can talk about retail figures that can mysteriously be too yeah. busy. So, anyway, alright, well now that Eric's here, we have to go. Yep, that's right. What we usually do is we wait for someone to come in so we can abruptly leave. Right, exactly. Thanks, Eric, for being the one. <laughs> we appreciate it. We're just actually done. I, I love his avatar, though. Yeah, what character is that, Lucas? Uh, I don't know, you tell me, Anna. Why don't you tell me, Lucas? <laughs> well, because I can say Springer correctly. Anyway, um, all right, so uh, tomorrow there's going to be an Ouch My Wallet, but it is not going to be live. It's pre recorded uh, because apparently Rob had some stuff going on and he's also sick and all this kind of thing. So you can. Uh, check it out tomorrow night and I'm sure he'll complain about being sick. Um, so. <laughs> You're so supportive. Of the I know, right? Um, and then uh, Friday, of course, uh, cut the tape. And, um, oh, oh, Eric, I didn't realize that um, uh, he's uh, involved with the, the magazine. Uh, oh, cool. So, oh, oh that's, uh, what's that? Is it the toy robot? Yeah, the toy robot. We should have uh, we should have them on. I'll have to talk to you after the show, Eric, and, and maybe we can uh, do a podcast or whatnot and do an Let's interview do about it because I'd really like to know more about that. So, oh my goodness, I miss Toy Magazine so much. I used to read every issue of Toy Fair like six hundred times. I was a teenager, don't judge me. From what I've read, this this new magazine is trying to replicate that, and they'll be kickstarting in the next couple weeks. Yeah, excitement. Eric, let's have you on. Let's. I think it's a good idea. Lucas will talk to you. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll message you and try and see if we can uh, do something. So, um, so yeah. So uh, Fridays cut the tape, uh, and then uh, Monday nights is uh, the uh, TFYLP main show. 
uh, as well. So, um, and again, those are going to be a mix of live and pre-recorded, just depending on what's going on and all that type of thing. So, anyway, so uh, that's that, and we'll see you guys next week. Awesome! Thanks. <laughs>